Well, very welcome uh, for you all. This is the expert meeting, and uh, I have a welcome address, but I want to, to share some thoughts about the role of heritage and the changing role of the city museum, because I hope it helps you when we visit the museum, and part of it is already explained by Nicole, my colleague, on the real Rotterdam Heritage Tour. Um, first of all, Yes. I was wondering, is there a museum's pecking order? When you are a city museum, which, which cats is the city museum? Well, obviously you know that the little kitten below is the city museum. So, and the fat cat is, you could say, the art museum. So this is the real Champions League. This is where the money goes. So follow the money and follow the fat cat. So in the meantime, when you are the little kid, and that doesn't mean that a little kid is it something you don't want to, to huckle or something, because it's something you want to share with. It is sympathetic to feel engaged with a little kitten. And everybody thinks that the fat cat is annoying. It's the Real Madrid cat, you could say. <laughs> So this is what this is our old museum premises. So this is the Schieland House. I'm not going into detail, but just I want you to focus that these were the big challenges when I became director in 2013. Um, suppose that you are a director of a city museum with 170 nationalities. We already had two beautiful talks about the relationship with super diversity and the role it takes uh, into a city museum. And then suppose that you're, this is your premises, and you want to become a museum of the city, a city in change, a dynamic city, always looking for transformations. And this is your premises, a patrician kind of museum, totally focused on the golden age. Nothing wrong about the golden age, past for slavery history, but that's not the topic. So this is the museum we had, and then we have the, the great challenges, um, that there is a reduction of the subsidy by 40%. So what are you going to do as a director? Are you going to stay here and become a, stay as a little kitten? Or do you try to say, well, let's change the focus of the museum, make sure that I become the most important museum of the city. Not because of what I show of the public, but because you're relevant for the city. So these are the challenges. So we started to experiment in all kinds of heritage since 2013. So we made uh, a distinction. So the, the real question for us uh, are, um, where does the city museum fit in? And I hope that today this expert meeting will help me as a general director to get a new step, to make a stepping stone. So you, the experts, are, I'm, I'm going to, uh, to round up this afternoon, so I want you to feed me with all your answers, because I have to move on to the next step. The other thing, but is there a convincing model? What kind of heritage are we dealing? Are we, as the fat cats, they say, this is the glamorous heritage, so is there a role for city museum, or should we focus more or less on the bonding heritage. So the heritage really connects people. But what then is bonding heritage? We are discussing now the role of intangible cultural heritage. But is there, a, what is the difference? What is the role of intangible cultural heritage? Or is it a combination? What are we going to do with the mental heritage? <coughs> particularly when you're focused on super diversity, what is then the role of heritage? when we're dealing with processes of generations, uh, accumulation of the past, which actually is transferred to new generation, when we're dealing with second and third generations, I remember the discussion yesterday uh, uh, and, and the analysis of Maureen Scroll, the emotions which are involved in heritage. So these are, I think, the relationship with mental heritage and migration studies is very, very important for the city museum. So this is a, a triangle I, I always use because it's very helpful. So we are in urban communities, and we already know the urban communities. We are able to explore urban communities, apart from the difficulties and the buzzwords communities, which was already addressed yesterday by Mark. But the other thing is that perhaps we need different kind of 
uh, of skills in the museum. But the most challenging part is, of course, I believe, the new representations. So do we as traditional museums, <coughs> are we able with our traditional focus on exhibitions, are we the real site in order to be the major agent for this social cultural change, which we hope that city museums are able to play? So this is according to me, and I know that pyramids don't work in a network society, but it's still helpful as an analytical tool, uh, so he said, we can stay. This is the Schielands was perhaps we have a collection, and the collection is based on the reification of the past. So we, uh, the nostalgia seekers, you could say. This was the home for the nostalgia seekers, but it did not work anymore in a super diverse context. And then we have the discussions, okay, we should engage the people, make sure that they become, they participate, and then are perhaps become co-creators. But perhaps there is another step for the city museum. And I think this is more relevant. And I want your opinion on that, as, as you are the experts. I'm just managing director, but you are the experts. So is there a role for the city museum in using heritage in order to improve the city? And what is the, uh, the interesting thing is that perhaps if this will become your focus, you will have a new business model for the museum. So, um, this is my, this is in particular relevant, is the third bullet, bullet then, uh, because if we look at, this is a, the City Museum is an invention of the 18th century, 19th century. So we're using all kinds of methodologies, analysis, uh, collection, preservations, etc., which are based on the 18th century model. Yesterday we learned in super diversity, in order to address the issues of a super diverse society, that means that we knew we need 21st century tools. So how are we going to bridge the gap between three centuries of uh, development of museums? So I hope that we can become, that we are not at the end of the heritage change, but that we are at the start of the heritage change. So that we are of uh, added value of the city for the stakeholders, and then with our knowledge expertise on cultural heritage, we will become, you could say, real heritage brokers, the heritage consultants. And what I like about consultancy, there's another fee involved, because the problem is that we don't have enough money, because we are not the glamour heritage, because we are bonding heritage, so who is going to willing to support us financially? So my concluding for this uh, discussion, where does the intangible in, in cultural heritage fit into this model? Uh, is there a solution? Is this the solution for a museum which is reinventing itself? Secondly, uh, where is then our business model? Because we are, you are all, we are believers. We love each other, we are believers. We are always, we are community embracing each other. But how are we going to convince the non-believers to think that the only relevance for a museum is to bring in the tourists, to bring in the money, make sure that the, the government, the city government, the national government can spend less money on the city museums and the market because we are all living in a neoliberal market economy. And globalization in that sense is used against the role of urban uh, city museums. So, but then are we not focusing on the wrong ideas? We are discussing the differences between intangible cultural heritage, cultural heritage and maybe mental heritage. But are we addressing the right folks or shouldn't we make sure that we go from a macro level and start rethinking the real issues and the role of the museums. And then, then we look, what do we need, what kind of models do we need to develop in order to bring the city museum one step further. And then, what is then the role? It's already addressed uh, yesterday in two beautiful keynotes, and I think this, these are the, for me, these are the rele uh, relevant challenges. And I'm not, I don't have the answers, eh? right? You are the expert, and I hope um, this is the great opportunity because I have the opportunity to come back to you at the end of the uh, of the afternoon. So I hope that some of the questions raised uh, here this morning will be addressed by you, and I'm sure I had the opportunity to do so pre-reading, so I know that some of, of the keynotes following my welcome address will uh, come to that, to these issues as well. Thank you.
and I'm glad that you were all here uh, on this early morning, and I hope you will enjoy <coughs> the day, and I give the floor back to our uh, moderator for the introduction of the next uh, speaker. Thank you very much.